Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we are taking another look at the Intel Arc 3A380. But this time, we're doing so with a 51 game benchmark, head to head with the Radeon RX 6400. And this will give us a better idea of how the A380 performs across a wide range of titles. And spoiler alert, it wasn't always smooth sailing, but there were some positive signs here and there. Bit of a mixed bag, you could say, and I'm very keen to show you the results. But before I do, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Be Quiet's new range of Silent Wings 4 high performance fans. Silent Wings 4 can not only be used as case fans, but are ideal for use on heat sinks and radiators, making them highly flexible thanks to a newly engineered design that reduces the distance between the fan blades and fan frame, allowing for maximum air pressure. Moreover, each fan's armed with a six pole motor featuring three phases for very low power consumption, less vibration, and crucially, virtually inaudible operation at regular speeds. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so if you missed it, we checked out the A380 for the first time about two weeks ago now with our standard review format, which looked at performance in a dozen games, uh, compared it with a range of other lowish end products, and we also checked out stuff like power consumption and thermals. Now, the aim for this video is to take that testing a big step further with a 51 game benchmark covering the 1080p and 900p resolutions, so 1600 by 900 using dialed down quality settings. At some point, I might also look at the overclocking performance as a lot of you have requested that, but first I wanted to prioritize stock performance to get a clear baseline for how the A380 performs. Now, at the time of making this video, Intel is still yet to release the A380 outside of China, so for most of you, this is still an unreleased product. So this is less about buying advice and more about just taking a look at what's going on with the A380. So with that, let's get into the benchmark results. For testing, I'm using our Ryzen 7 5800X 3D GPU test system. And yeah, I know no one is going to pair a budget graphics card with this CPU, but that's obviously not the point. We're testing GPU performance, and therefore we wish to avoid introducing a CPU bottleneck, which would skew the data. Now, for our low end to entry level testing, we typically use medium quality settings or settings that make sense for a given title. Also, please note that for this testing, both the A380 and RX 6400 have been tested exclusively with resizable bar enabled. And as we found in our original A380 review, rebar is mandatory for this product as performance is horrible without it. Then for the drivers, I'm using AMD Software Adrenal Edition 22.7.1 and Intel graphics driver 30.0.101.1743. Finally, I've tested at 1080p and 900p, and we'll go over about 16 titles individually before getting into the 51 game breakdown graphs. Also, please note that all graphs will be made available to Patreon and Floatplane members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with Death Stranding, we find comparable performance between these two GPUs, so not a bad result for the A380 if it does indeed end up costing around $50 US less than the RX 6400. At 900p, the Intel GPU was about 3% faster, and then at 1080p, the average frame rate performance was much the same, though the A380 did offer 20% stronger 1% lows. Now, here we see the A380 was quite incredible relative to the RX 6400 and Hitman 3, delivering over 70% more performance at both tester resolutions. The game was certainly noticeably smoother and much more enjoyable with the Arc GPU, hitting 77 FPS at 900p and just shy of 60 FPS at 1080p, while the RX 6400 was good for just 34 FPS. So quite a remarkable result here, and while we did see other similar examples throughout our testing, I do regret to inform you that they were few and far between. Another great showing for the A380 was the Division 2, where it was 64% faster than the RX 6400 at 1080p, taking the average frame rate from a laggy 45 FPS to a rather smooth 74 FPS with 1% lows of 62 FPS. The experience using the Arc GPU was worlds better, and it's a shame we didn't see more of this. Wolfenstein Youngblood was another successful title for the Arc GPU, and in fact both the A380 and RX 6400 performed very well at 900p with over 100 FPS on average, though the Radeon GPU did end up coming out on top by a 10% margin. However, we were able to use the ultra quality preset here, and this gave the A380 and its larger 6GB VRAM buffer an advantage at 1080p, 
allowing it to pull ahead by a 36% margin to deliver a very respectable 75 FPS on average. Now, I hit my first roadblock with the A380 when trying to fire up Dirt 5, which just flat out doesn't work with the Intel GPU. The game doesn't even load, you just get served an error message. Obviously that is a big issue, but it's also a shame as this modern title does run very well on lower end hardware using modest quality settings. As such, it is highly playable using the RX 6400. So big points deducted from the A380 here, and Intel will certainly need to fix this. Next up we have Apex Legends, and here the A380 was competitive with the RX 6400, trailing it by just a few frames. And that means both were good for over 90 FPS at 900p, so a good result for the A380, especially if it does end up being cheaper than the RX 6400. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5, we find the Arc GPU can't quite hang in there with the RX 6400, trailing by up to an 11% margin. That said, performance overall is much the same, so realistically either GPU is going to result in a similar gaming experience. And it's a similar story in F122. Here the A380 was 10% slower at 1080p, which isn't too bad, though the 16% margin it trailed by at 900p is starting to get up there, and for those of you with high refresh rate monitors, you'll certainly notice the difference. Battlefield 5 ran much better using the Radeon GPU at 900p. The A380 was 15% slower when looking at the average frame rate, and 20% slower for the 1% lows. The margins did close up at 1080p, but even so, here the Intel GPU was still 10% slower. So while overall the game was playable, you'd certainly rather play it with the RX 6400 if you had the choice. Well, we've heard our Intel prioritize support for newer APIs such as DirectX 12 and Vulkan, so perhaps these results shouldn't come as a surprise. Still, CSGO is a wildly popular game, so these results are going to be a complete and utter deal breaker for a good many of you. You're looking at more than twice the performance with the RX 6400, and while the A380 still was playable, stability was a real concern here. Multiple times during my testing, the game just crashed a desktop, and that's not something that has ever happened with a Radeon GPU, at least not in the last few years of benchmarking with this title. So again, Intel has a lot of driver work to do here. Another game where the A380 struggled was Fortnite. Granted, these frame rates are certainly playable, they're less than ideal for a competitive shooter, and what we received from the RX 6400 was significantly more impressive, and far more desirable for those of you rocking a high refresh rate monitor. Halo Infinite using the lowest quality settings saw the A380 fail to hit even 60 FPS on average, even at 900p. So performance overall was disappointing to say the least, especially given that at 1080p the RX 6400 was almost 40% faster. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2, where I ran into some more driver related issues. This time the Vulkan API caused crashes. It was possible to run our benchmark, but it did take a number of passes to get the results. Basically, the game was completely unstable. However, DirectX 12 did appear to run without issues, so the A380 can be benchmarked here using DX12, while the RX 6400 was tested using Vulkan. The end result being a 26% performance advantage for the Radeon GPU at 900p, and 22% at 1080p. The God of War experience with the A380 was interesting, because at first I thought this was going to be another non-starter. The game did load, but the initial menus were extremely slow and almost impossible to navigate, but once I managed to hit the continue button, the game loaded and was quite playable, though like CSGO we did experience a few crashes while testing, so although we did manage to gather our results, they're somewhat invalid given the stability issues. The second last game we're going to look at is World War Z Aftermath, and here we ran into more issues. For some reason it wasn't even possible to use Vulcan in this title, as in the option just wasn't there, couldn't select it, I could only run the game with DirectX 11, and while the game did run fine, it would crash on exit and hang the entire system for about 60 to 30 seconds before returning to the desktop, so that was fun. This all means though that the RX 6400 was tested using Vulkan while I was forced to use DirectX 11 for the A380. The performance was horrible, especially relative to the RX 6400 which offered more than twice the performance. Far Cry 6 also suffered from a menu bug, which results in very slow navigation, making it difficult to change settings or even get into the game. That aside though, the game didn't crash, at least during our testing, and the performance overall was decent. So the menu bug aside, this was one of the stronger results for the A380. 
Okay, so we've just looked at the individual results for 16 of the 51 games tested. Now it's time to see how the ARC 3 A380 and Radeon RX 6400 compare head to head in all 51 games. So let's move on to do that at 900p and 1080p. Starting with the 900p data, we see just how much of a mixed bag the A380 is. And sadly, it's a bit more bad than it is good. As seen earlier, the Arc GPU was really impressive in a handful of games, including Hitman 3, The Division 2, Doom Eternal, Rainbow Six Extraction, and Metro Exodus. Then for seven of the games tested, the performance was highly competitive, with margins within 5%. Unfortunately though, 14 of the games saw the A380 trail by a 20% margin or greater, with most seeing a 10% or larger margin, and that gave us an 11% difference on average. So that is 11% slower for the A380. And it is worth noting that these results omit Dirt 5, where the A380 completely failed to launch the game, so zero FPS there. And then we also had issues in God of War and CSGO, where stability was a concern. The margin at 1080p moves slightly in favor of the A380, as here it was 7% slower on average. But again, that doesn't really give us the full picture, as we were very much looking at a mixed bag of results, and that's ignoring titles that either didn't run or had some kind of game-breaking issue. I gotta say, the Intel Arc 3 A380 didn't perform as poorly as I had initially expected in this 51 game benchmark, though that's not to say the experience overall was good. There were a few titles where the experience was great, and then many where it was just okay, and then there were many where the performance was pretty horrible, or stability was a problem, or both. There's really two sides of the Intel driver problem. Firstly, there's the game support, which we've just tested, and clearly there is a lot of work that needs to be done here to improve performance, compatibility, and stability. The other side of the driver is the control utility, so Intel's version of NVIDIA's GeForce Experience, or AMD Software Adrenaline Edition. Intel's ARC control is horrible with so many issues I simply can't cover them all in this video. It really would require its own dedicated content, and that's exactly what Gamers Nexus did with their video titled, Worst We've Ever Tested, Broken Intel ARC GPU Drivers. And I can confirm that I've experienced almost all of the issues they discussed in that video. So it is very broken, and Intel has a mountain of work ahead of them, especially if they plan to release ARC later this year in what I'd call an official capacity. And it is also worth noting that the Radeon RX 6400 is a truly terrible product. So the bar has been set extremely low for Intel at the entry level. Right now, the RX 6400 costs at least $150 US and is really only a justifiable purchase for those of you who require a single slot low profile graphics card. Outside of that though, you're best off saving up for an RX 6600 or just shopping secondhand. Now I did say in my A380 review that I'd be tempted to roll the dice on the A380 in the hope that Intel comes through with driver support, but I've got to say after spending more time with it, I'm not so sure I'd be willing to take that bet. With half decent drivers it would be a much better product than the RX 6400, but if and when we'll get half decent drivers is really hard to say. Placed in a situation where I was looking at buying an entry level graphics card, I think I'd just take to eBay or a similar site in search of a second hand deal. Think like a GTX 1650, RX 580 or something along those lines. I really do hope though that Intel can turn things around. It is gonna take some major changes. I'm not entirely sure Intel's capable of that, but as always, time will tell. And if you enjoyed this video, then please do give it a like, subscribe for more Hardware Unboxed content. And if you'd like to become a Hardware Unboxed member and help support content such as this, because we did have to purchase this and I paid way too much. I'm mean, actually embarrassed to say how much I paid to get this from China. Uh, but yeah, let's say I could have bought a significantly better graphics card for that money. But of course, it doesn't matter too much because we have our lovely Patreon and Floatplay members. So if you'd like to become one, Links are in the video description. You can sign up to either service. They'll both give you access to our exclusive Discord server. Tim and I do a monthly live stream for Patreon and Floatplane members. We have a Discord chat for you guys where Tim and I are active with the rest of the awesome Harbour Unbox community. Behind the scenes content, Tim's building a new studio. So there's some cool videos there. A lot of stuff there. So if you're interested, check it out. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.